Hi, welcome to Reawakening Beauty. I'm your host, Shauna Petruno. I'm so excited to have you here. I love talking about all things skin-related, beauty-related, and mind-related. Here I empower you, mind, body, skin, and soul. I'm here with Sarah Arnold, and give them a little genre of what you do, Sarah. Sure. So I'm a high-performance coach, and I help people achieve impossible goals. So anything that feels out of reach or anything that feels just like beyond what you think is possible for your life. That could be literally anything. Um, that's what I help people do. So I help them with the mindset and the action and the strategy behind achieving impossible goals. And that's exactly why I wanted you here today because reawakening beauty is all about that raw beauty and stepping into the best version of yourself. And Sarah, were you always confident? Was that something that you kind of growing up, you had this confident bone in you or was that something you grew into? I think I've been confident as a person, but you know, confidence can come out in one way and look really confident in one aspect. And then in other aspects can be like, you have no confidence at all, right? Like it's not necessarily like pure self-confidence about everything. So I definitely had confidence as a kid, but I think also there were a lot of areas where I didn't feel very confident. And so, you know, I had to work on those. Could you give us an example of basically something that maybe you lacked confidence that you started to grow and nurture to be a more confident version of yourself? Yeah, sure. Definitely when I began coaching people, I really didn't have very much. I mean, I had a certain base level of confidence, but most coaches are like in their 30s or 40s or 50s, 60s. And, you know, I was starting out in my twenties and I really had this idea that because I was young, um, that people wouldn't take me seriously. And it really played into my self-concept for the first, you know, year or so when I started coaching was like, who's going to take me seriously? Who wants to hire somebody to help them with their goals when I'm only, I was, I was like 21 at the time. Right. And it really shifted for me because I, I used to tell myself all the time, like, Uh, you know, by the, I would say I'm only 22. So like by, uh, after a whole year of thinking this way, like my brain was still stuck on, like I'm only 22. Like maybe when I get to, you know, 29 or 30, then people will take me seriously, but I'm only 22. I'm only 22. And then one day I was at a conference and I overheard somebody say, oh my gosh, have you met Sarah? She's done all of this stuff and she's only 22. And it like shifted in my mind. Like, oh, so this could be a positive thing. Just a simple, and she's only 22 instead of, but she's only 22, right? Like it just completely shifted the way I saw it. And I was like, oh, so being younger in the industry could be my advantage. It could be fresh. It could be the fact that, you know, because a lot of people in my mind, it, you know, 99% of it was in my mind. Hardly anybody has ever told me that I'm too young to do this, but I had kind of taken that on. And you know, I had this idea that I needed all this life experience, you know, and then I started looking for all the reasons why, you know, being 22 was actually the fantastic place to start being a coach, you know, and I thought about all the reasons why it was wonderful. Like, for example, the fact that I didn't, I wasn't bogged down by like decades of trying something and it not working. I didn't have a negative outlook on life. I had a really positive outlook on life that maybe that somebody who has more experience might've, you know, been a you know, although, you know, I might not have had as much, like hadn't lived on the planet for as long. I had just as much, or if not more uh, belief about what was possible in the world. And, you know, and I had all my own experiences. Like I'd still lived 20 something years of my life. It wasn't like I had just appeared on the planet. So I started looking for all the ways why this was actually to my advantage. And that really helped me build my confidence. So you were like breaking down your concept of self and like, whereas before is like, oh gosh, I'm only 22. I can't do anything. And now you're stepping into, oh, wow, look, of all the things I'm 22 and look at what I can do. Cause there, mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people have ageism. So as we get older, as we start to age, a lot of people can go the opposite way too. And they can say, Hey, well, I'm too old to do this. My brain doesn't work the same way. Mm-hmm. There's so many things we got stuck in and lack of confidence I'm very much, I really had none growing up, not a shred of it. And I really do believe it's something that you can learn. Now with your clients, Sarah, have you had a lot of people who have come to you with low confidence, like having these huge goals and dreams? 
I know what I say to people, but I'm so curious about what you say to people with that kind of maybe low self-concept and not understanding what they're capable of because of years of maybe being torn down and other people not seeing the beauty that is them. Yeah, that's such a good question. I always say that self-doubt is a symptom of inaction, right? So the more that we don't take action, so the more we don't see results, the more that feeds back to our brain saying, you can't do this. You're not good enough. You know, who are you to do this? And all of those unhelpful thoughts that we have. But the more that you take action, even in tiny little actions and see tiny little results, it's like another thing in the bank saying, like in in your mental bank saying, hey, I can't do this. Like one more reason why you will be successful. And it feeds back to your brain. It makes it really easy. Of course, you can do it without all of the evidence, but it's really much easier for your brain to believe that you can do something when it starts to see evidence that you can. Of course, like you can spend all the time in the world doing you know, 10 hours of affirmations. And I really do believe in affirmations, but you can also take like five minutes of action and see a result. And then let that be the thing that triggers all of your thoughts saying, Hey, I can't do this. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. Five minutes of action can really (laughs) just spiral, just such a belief system in yourself. Now I have a question. So people who are struggling with fear, Sarah, A lot of people have fear of maybe success because they have this self-doubt. It's something I've used to struggle with. Did you have fear of success or anything like that? What would you say to someone who's struggling with maybe fear? Like there's like, I'm not going to take action because I'm not perfect. But the funny thing is you're never going to get good if you don't start. So Mm -hmm. I have an analogy when I was younger And I don't know if you have a funny analogy. I would not play sports. I'm actually quite athletic, but I would be like, I won't play sports. And I didn't, I would literally cross my arms and have them in front of me. And I would not do anything because I wasn't perfect. Well, as years and years go by as a little five-year-old doing that, now you're 12 and 14, of course, you're not going to be good. Right? So I listened to Tony Robbins and he said, well, little kids, they don't wake up. And then all of a sudden their mom like shoves them down and says, you're not a walker. Now, as someone who's struggling with this, I'm not perfect. BS. What do you say to them? Yeah, I love that idea of not the idea of not being a walker. Like we just give up on the kid and be like, oh, I guess you're not going to walk. Like you never do that. Yeah. That's such an interesting point. I think I'm going to have to think about that for a second. Yeah. So for myself, What really helped me is like, well, if I just take no action, right, I'm going to be in the exact same spot. I can take some action and it may not be perfect action, but at least I'm doing something. And I think that that shift when I remembered being a kid and I I wasn't playing sports and then all of a sudden I started maybe younger, I started running, I think it was track. I'm an excellent runner. And then all of a sudden I realized, you know, like, I wish I started. I did the same thing with computer skills and I didn't start till later in life. And I was like, you know, you're going to have to learn eventually. And it's better to start now than later down the road, because then you just more compiling. So for me, it was just a mindset switch that if I don't start, I'm still going to have to learn the thing, but what is my uncomfortable feeling? The uncomfortable feeling that I'm having here is if I don't step into who I want to be and the things I want to achieve, I'm going to have so much regret. I think that's the more uncomfortable feeling than having everyone watch me fail. Well, this really reminds me of the comparison piece, right? Because like, why do we feel like we need to be perfect when we're doing it? Because we want to be as good as Serena Williams like today when we don't realize the journey that she's been on to get there. And Although I think it's fantastic to believe that we can do all of these things, we have to be aware of how much, like I totally believe in the impossible. I 100% believe that we can do anything and that our capability is just incredible. But you have to build the capacity. We don't necessarily have the capacity to be the Serena Williams today. You might have the capability within you, like your internal self has the ability to do it if you train. And if you really push yourself, you could come as good as Serena Williams. But if you never train, it's like, we just want to be there today and we don't want to put in the work. I mean, she's been training since she was like three, right? So that's actually, you know, you were saying about being five and then 12 and 14 and being like, oh gosh, I wish I'd started earlier. I remember being like 10 years old and saying, oh, I'm too old to start dancing. 
because I had already done one style of dance and I wanted to start another, but I felt too old. I felt like I'd missed out so many years. And now I think back to being 10 years old and thinking, imagine if I'd started at 10 years old. And that's actually one of the things that I think about with my coaching is like, you know, where am I going to be as a coach in at 35 or 45, having started at 21 instead of having started at 35 or 45? I'm excited because honestly, I think so many people have in their head, like I can't start now because of this age, but every second you don't start, like that's more time. So just start and maybe you're not going to be perfect at the thing, but that fear that's holding you back, it's just going to get greater. And then you're going to watch it and feel less than. So I just say, take action. And that builds confidence. For me, it was putting myself in different situations. I had a confidence course before, and it's like, you take the action and then it feels uncomfortable. Like me starting this Spotify thing and talking with amazing humans like yourself, it feels uncomfortable, but I'm like, if I don't do it, how am I ever going to get good? And if I'm going to wait until I'm as good as Oprah, I'd be waiting a long time and not doing a lot of stuff. (laughs) So yeah, exactly. So just going, I think it's Michael Jordan who said, right. Like he's missed 9,000 shots in his career or something like that. You know, he was trusted to take the game winning shot, you know, however many times and he missed it however many times. And like, we don't think of that when we think of Michael Jordan, we just think of all his successes, but they were all built upon failure on failure on failure. Absolutely. And I would encourage anyone who's struggling with confidence or just like, should I start? Should I not start? And I, I mean, I think it's important to have like a coach. I do think that having someone, cause you know what coaches do and I believe this. So I think coaches compress time for you because they've already gone mm-hmm. through that. Right. So having a coach is definitely important. Having people around you who are going to breathe life into you. So your circle of five people to help you with your confidence and who are you hanging out with? That all helps your confidence. What would you say, Sarah, if someone's looking to boost their confidence? I would start spending time around the kind of people that you want to be like. So I joined a mastermind recently that is full of entrepreneurial women who are just crushing it. And more than anything that we're learning in that mastermind, it's just being around those women. It's like that it's just absolutely mind blowing to see what they're doing and to see that I'm one of them and that we're all cheering each other on and helping each other out, like that feeling is huge. So even if you're, you know, there's not a mastermind or something that you can join, getting yourself around the kind of people who are doing what you want to be doing is like absolutely huge and will really accelerate you. Like when I initially started my coaching business, I was, I had a lot of other friends who were starting coaching. I, I connected with them online And that's fantastic, except that we were all struggling coaches. So it was just a situation of, you know, us like all struggling and nobody knowing what to do. And we were kind of leading each other down a bunch (laughs) of rabbit holes. Like it was just not helpful at all. And it it was a great support system, but it wasn't effective. So I would definitely recommend getting yourself around people. And, And now, especially you know, online, you can connect with it. There's no excuse for not being able to find your ideal people. I think Facebook groups are like the best place ever to connect with your ideal people. Cause you can surround yourself by people who are doing the thing you want to do. Yeah. And just also finding someone who's done it and kind of studying what they've done as well is really cool as well. Sarah, thank you so much. Before we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to say, my love? I feel like you're right. The piece you were saying before, that taking action is really important. It's like, just start taking action. But I think that sometimes we get overwhelmed with like, well, what do I actually begin doing? And so I would just say to anyone listening, write out a list of the main big chunk, non-negotiable steps, and then just start working on the first one, whatever that looks like. Do you need to send an email? Do you need to make a phone call? Do you need to write something? Because sometimes it can feel so overwhelming to try and like, now I'm going to be a really famous public speaker or now I'm going to become a doctor or now I'm going to do whatever. It's like, where do you even begin? So actually write out a list on paper of the steps that it's going to take, like the big main steps and then start working on the first one. That would be like my best advice for taking action. Thank you so much, Sarah. I really appreciate you being on the show today. And if you guys want to find out more about Sarah, it will be listed in the show notes. Thank you so much, Shauna. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, everyone.